Hello everyone and peace of the Lord of the Messiah with all of you and happy Easter for those who they are in the uh, east side of the world in Asia, in Singapore, in Indonesia, in Malaysia, India I guess already they are in the Easter day so happy Easter, he is risen, he is alive, he is our Lord uh, Today our topic is about the nature of Islam and how some they try to present themselves to us. But before we talk about what Muslims say, I saw some comments in my previous video. And uh, this is a comment made an hour ago. And this guy, he don't claim to be a Muslim. Uh, obviously, it's a copy-paste uh, article. His name is Diego Costantino. Uh, my friend, go change your name because those are Christian names. You are a very weird person. And then, just to make it simple for you, just to show you how stupid a human being he can be, he is saying that the Christian, they copy the Old Testament. <laughs> Should we make a new one? <laughs> Supposedly, he's trying to prove a Christianity to be false. Isn't it Jesus, he said, I came to complete the law, not to destroy it? You are an idiot. And then he say, uh, he is showing you evidence, you know, about uh, Christ cannot be Christ. And then look what he said, just to show you the stupidity of, the, of those creatures. He say, according to the Talmud, a book of fictions, even the Jews cannot approve it. Flying carpet, the ant speaking to Solomon, Solomon, all the stories of Muhammad is coming from there. A book of Talmud, this is a book of God, even the Jews agree that this has nothing to do with the book of God. So you are giving me a book written by the Antichrist, and prove it to me actually that you are a donkey because you should look what you just did according to the Talmud between two brackets the Babylonian Talmud Rosh Hashanah 31a and etc you can read the rest and then he says and etc and etc etc the deadline by which the Messiah must appear is 6,000 years from the creation we, we you just shot yourself in the in the foot According to him, this is will happen in 2,240 uh, years. Hmm. If we go and calculate the numbers now from the time of the creations, we will come to your number and we will find out if it's true or not. But regardless of the number you gave us of 2,240, the Messiah, according to the Jews, he is going to come riding a donkey. In the year 2240. Hmm. I see. I might say this is very convincing. But if we go right now and calculate the numbers, really, are going to find 2,240? Uh, if we go right now, just to do a little uh, study, I'm not going even to calculate. I will use Prophet Google, peace be upon him. Concerning the age of earth, Bible genealogy record combined with Genesis 1 account of the creation are used uh, estimate an age of an earth of the universe of about 6,000 years, which a bit and certainly whatever you can read that, uh, you know, the, what, 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 uh, what the internet say about uh, this uh, calculation. Uh, but I find it very funny that you are trying to prove that the Messiah, no way he come, unless it is 6,000 year pass after the creation, and you are taking your evidence from books which is made 
some most of it actually long after Jesus which obviously is made and designed to disapprove Jesus we know that the Talmud is the book of hate against Jesus same time uh, when you say to me there's a book says that Jesus will come 6,000 years after Christ well shouldn't we find that from the evidence in the Old Testament if you read the rest what he is saying you will laugh so a poor person trying to make an argument copy an article of somebody but little study you will find that everything in that argument is false same time in the same stupid book you call it the Talmud it says that the Messiah obviously he went to Egypt and he learned how to do magic so he was healing people so the Messiah the healer is approved in the book of the devil which is called Talmud and when they try to explain how the Messiah he can do his miracles he learned magic now do you agree with the magic story if you agree you are a donkey in one hand you speak about evidence in one hand you ignore the evidence so the Talmud maker who deny that Jesus is being godly person miracle of God by doing miracles they claim that he went to Egypt and he learned magic well how come all the Jews who live in Egypt for centuries did not learn the magic but Jesus he took a vacation which is nowhere proven. The only time Jesus he went to Egypt is when he was, he was a, an infant. He did not grow in Egypt. You are a mental ill. So if you are taking evidence from the same book you are reading, then you take the evidence from the same book you are reading. And the evidence point that the Messiah is the Messiah. For the Messiah is not a person he announced himself the Messiah. It's not a person he witnessed for him to be the Messiah. It's a person who do what the Messiah does. So again, you are stupid. Anyway, I'm not going to waste my time. I will leave your comment there and I will let people answer you. Uh, you are mentally ill using a Talmud, the book of fairy tale stories and stupidity. Another person here, his name is uh, Friedel er Ersel. Um, let me move a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Let me move this page here. That will be better. He said, what bothered me about all discussion is that there is nothing to argue against one both side. Neither the Muslims nor the Christians side has any evidence that can be scientifically uh, like uh, substantial or whatever. And here is an example of a stupidity. Scientific evidence. This guy is looking for scientific evidence. And the second we ask them, what is scientific evidence? It's like, you know, those atheists today, they are asking you even what is the scientific is evidence of a woman? What is a woman? So after all the science we have, computers and engineers, and they went to the space, until now they are confused what is a woman so those are the people who speak about scientific evidence they do not know what is the women it's not like we are talking about going deep in the ocean we are talking about a woman a woman you know your mother my mother they don't know what is a woman those are the same people they speak about scientific evidence now we say miracle they say scientific evidence <laughs> But when something happened in the field of science and no science can explain it, even the scientists themselves, they say it's a miracle. You will see an atheist who is a, a surgeon, a person who survived a surgery, a sur survived cancer. He say, we do not know how it happened. It's a miracle. They themselves, they use the same term we use. But for sure, they don't connect that word miracle to God, but they connect it to something they cannot explain. This is what miracle is. Miracle is something we cannot explain except in a superpower 
over your intelligence and over your science. So you are stupid again. And then he said, but I can assure you that I just as easily expose the Christian side so it can be rejected without much effort. Okay, big claim need big evidence. Uh, okay, I wanna, you know, I want to go with the word big. When an idiot, he come to me and he says the earth is created or the universe created by Big Bang. What is the evidence? You see, big claim need big evidence. Are you mental? What is the big evidence you have that the earth and the heaven and the earth and, and the galaxies created by the big bang? Nothing. It's a theory. A theory who you claim it's a fact, the same as Darwin, it's a theory. And there is many creatures around us in life, they are totally against the theory of Darwin, which he started from different person. He claimed it to himself because he's a thief like the rest of you. So when you speak about big evidence, what evidence you have? You speak too much about science. What science you have? A stupid virus made you go in the house like, like, a, like a rat. Wearing a mask wherever you go, paranoid if you go in the elevator, and you speak of science. You don't have science, you have bullshit. You cannot even until now make a medicine without causing a big harm to the one who will take it. If you watch any commercial for medicine made by the scientists, not by the Christian, not by the Jews, those are, let us say those are atheist scientists, not Christian there. Let us assume there's no Christian scientist, only atheist. Have you ever heard of a medicine? As an example, I'm not going to mention the, the medicine in, in YouTube. All of you, you hear the commercial. Migraine. Okay, you have a migraine. Take this medicine. This medicine is amazing, proven, blah, 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 proved, you know, approved by the FDA, blah, 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 blah. But, uh, and then, disclaimer, this medicine can cause heart attack, internal bleeding, brain bleeding, a, a brain attack, brain uh, you know, attack. I mean, you kill the guy. So, to stop migraine in a head of a, a human being, you are going to cause him heart attack, internal bleeding, Suffocating, asthma, it's just to stop the migraine. So you call this science, I call it garbage. Can you find one medicine does not have a very serious side effect? If you can't find me that, medicine created by the scientist, but not nature, you know, then I will say, well, you know what, you have science. Here we go, you are over income things. You, you are just a joker. All your science is based on trial. Trial. Like we try things until we get successful with something, but this is not really science. This is a practical of a trial. We try. Until it work. So your science have no evidence. And by the way, I'm not against the word science, but a science is just a, a temporary word, can be changed, the same as the weather change. As an example, if you go to the word science 500 years ago, we will see that the science 500 years ago is started from, from now. Well, isn't it science 500 years ago? Yes, it was science. Is it approved by all scientists? Yes. But today is different. And the same will happen 500 years from now. So your science is a very flexible word. What you claim as a big evidence cannot be proven. You make a discovery every day, and many of them, they disapprove your previous discovery. As an example, you know, we all of us, we all of us, we know that the, 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 the a Newton uh, 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 or other other theories, like as an example, uh, big bodies they drag, you know, by the gravity the small bodies. So like uh, the apple fell down, right? And the apple fell down. Why the apple did not go up? Because the Earth is massive in size and the apple is small. But they found lately that this is not all always true. 
It can be the opposite if your size is so small. You can fly, even if you are, or this you know, object is exist in the top of a massive size like the earth. This is what science is saying. So what was for granted, now there's exception. And later we might find there's exception for the exception. An exception for exception for exception. Is it possible that what Jesus did is nothing but exception? And this is what we call it miracle? So when you try to disapprove of Christianity, you prove nothing. Because we have, even as we mentioned, the Talmud, the book of the enemy, the book of the devil, mentioned that Jesus was doing miracles and they claimed that he was doing magic. Are you going to say that too? There's tons of historians, Mr. Science, Mr. Evidence, who they are not Christians. They witness that Christ and his disciples, they did miracles. How? They do not know. How they make it? They do not know. Even the book of the devil, which is written by Muhammad, witnessed that the Messiah, he did something nobody can do. He has resurrected people from death. He can make the blind see. Even he created from the mother bird. Big claim need big evidence. Well, possibly the only way to make you believe in it is to make you go after you die and let us send us a letter. Because you won't have no evidence even of your existence. You see, when an atheist, he speak about evidence. Do you have an evidence that you exist? Do you have any evidence that you yourself are exist? You don't. Because you are nothing but little dirt and water. And that evidence can be demolished any second. Can disappear. We have dirt in the street. We have water. But this is not you. Do you have an evidence? So you can deny that water and dirt can make a human being. Because you need evidence. Because big claim need big evidence. But the evidence all around us. You die, you become a dirt, and you become water. 90% of or more of your body is water. The rest is dirt. You call it a mix of mineral, it doesn't matter, it's dirt. Mineral is exist in the dirt, in the water, in the fluid. So when those people, they, uh, you know, they speak about big evidence and they fail to give us the big evidence. As an example, look here at the story he gave us, a drama. He told God, read with me and love. Uh, seemed like going to be black story. Okay. What they both how the fatalism in which it end it was always heaven and hell also infinite whoever, whoever i face the following question is answered the same on both sides okay what is the question uh, the question the previous question uh-huh okay if i were to started to stand before god and ask what I can do, God, would tell me whatever I wanted. God, I want to learn to play the old instrument as no human being has ever been able to do. I mean, look at the serious question. This guy, now he met God. And now he decide to bring the good, the big evidence. God, I want to play all instrument as no ever human being did that before. Have you ever heard of a stupid requirement like this or a question to God like this? What do you want to, what does that mean? And what do you think of God is your waitress or he is your music teacher and why God will answer such a stupid you know this is selfish first of all. You are thinking about yourself. You are not thinking about the music actually. You are just thinking about how to be the best in playing music. You are just a selfish creature. 
and the, and, and the request is showing us how idiot you are. And this is why atheism is nothing but an idiot belief. Because everyone worship himself. And even when they challenge God or make a challenge in their mind imaginary, it's about being selfish. Hey God, how long it take, like by your help, for me to play all instrument in the world and to be the best of it? Why you want to do that? Because you are selfish, because you are an idiot, because you are a thief. So you want to steal all the skills from every human being so you can be God. And this is what atheism is about. You want to be the best in everything, you, just me, me, not you, not anyone else. So now you decide to question God and asking God a question, asking him for help. And now what is, is to be the best person who play instrument. Hello. Is that including him? And then look what he said. As no human being has ever been able, that that good God will say, huh? he just even know what God, God will say. I mean, do you see the evidence? Big claim, need big evidence. The good God will say, this guy, he knew what big bad God will say. And the small God will not say this. Okay. He say, how long do you think it will take? I answer, well, 10 million years. So I got to work. And after 10 million years, I stand before God again. And he asked, what do you want to do now? I say, I want to rest now for 10 million years. What the heck is that? I mean, what kind of medication you are taking before you start your conversation with us? And all of this to prove Christianity to be false? I have answer for your stupidity in two seconds. A blind man, he said to Jesus, I want to see. The blind man, he did not receive an answer from Jesus that you need 10 million years to fix your eyes. He fixed it immediately. But maybe because you are so donkey, it's going to take 10 million years to learn music. And this is why you decide to make it that long. Because you know your limit and you know how stupid you are. But the blind man was a smart person. He knew the ability of Christ. He did not ask him for food. He did not ask him for a sandwich. He did not ask him for the nation. He did not ask him to cross the street. He said, Lord, I want to see. The same as the one who cannot walk. Which one is easier to teach a donkey like you music or you cannot walk and he make you walk in a second? So your logic is a stupid and obviously you are mental. You are no different from the other person who is trying to find evidence against Jesus from Talmud, a book written after Jesus, most of it, against Jesus. And nobody even knows who is writing that book. Flying carpet, the flying, you know, the penis of Suleiman and the penis of uh, Abraham. Abraham, he chopped his penis by ads. I mean, all the crazy stuff in this, those stupid books. Now we go to a Muslim, and this is why our topic today about the Muslim, but we wanted to answer those before uh, we go there. And this is the another face of Islam. You know, there's Muslim who want to threaten you to kill you, terrorist. And there's Muslim, they come to you in a sheep clothing, literally. Oh, our beloved Christians, brothers, have you ever heard of a Muslim? He called Christians our beloved brothers? Since when? So, Threatening me did not work. Threatening you did not work. Doing terrorism attack did not work. So what will work? Let us try to fool them. Suddenly, oh, our beloved Christian brothers, isn't it your stupid Quran says that only Muslims are brothers to each other? And they are united against the kuffar, you liar? Let us go to your stupid Quran to expose your sheep clothing. And by the way, you are not even a wolf, you are a pig. And why can't prove it?
a person who drink camel urine, a person who have sex with a child, six years old, and here's your best example, a person who go to his wife, his son wife house and he flirt with her and later he f her, he is nothing but a pig. And when you, this is your best example, you must be a pig like him. Uh, let us see how they try to fool us with their uh, with their religion. Even if a Muslim, he oppose other Muslim, the first Muslim have to kill the second Muslim. And this is Quran. Chapter 49, verse number 9. Okay. If two groups of disbelievers, of believers, fight each other, reconcile between them, but if one group aggresses against the other, fight the aggressing group until they complies. But now each one of them, he says, they are the aggressor. They are the aggressor. So you will see ISIS and Al-Qaeda, each one of them accuse the other party that they are the enemy of Allah. They are the aggressor. And they have tons of evidence. And actually, this is the verse in the Quran which destroy Islam. Muhammad, he established legalizing Muslims killing each other. This is how Islam destroyed one verse. All of the idea of the brotherhood of Muslims destroyed in this verse. The verse after it says, the believers are brothers. Ooh, stupid people calling me. Who is a person? A woman calling me. And doesn't sound like it's a Muslim. Anyway, let me put the headphone down in case somebody call again. Uh, so if we go and ask right now. Can a Muslim take a Christians and Jews as a friends, not a brothers? Friends. The answer no. Chapter 5, verse 51. But this guy is saying to us, our beloved brother, our what? Beloved. You are not only a brother, you are a beloved brother. Let us go to the Quran. So the devil Muhammad now is trying to send you. Hello? Hello? Yes, why are you calling me? I'm live. Who are you? Yes, I'm a Christian prince. Why are you are calling? Well, I'm a Christian prince. What do you want? I'm here. Why are you are calling me? Well, I'm live on air. Are you a Christian? Okay, what do you want? Okay, and how I can help you? Yeah. And I, will, I want to talk to you about my experience and everything. Okay, um, listen, I have I have, have a topic, I have a topic. When I say Muslims can call me, then you can call me. If not, you cannot. So now you are disturbing my topic, you can call me. When I say Christians can call me, and then you can tell me about your experience. Is that good? Yeah, I would like to talk to you about 
to be private. Oh, okay. Lord have mercy. All right. So if we go in the Quran, chapter 5, verse 51, you will see the Quran exposing those liars who they call you our beloved brother, beloved Christians, our beloved brother. Oh, who you believe, take not the Jews and the Christians as a fr for your friends and protectors. They are but your friends and protectors to each other. And he among you that turns to a friendship with them, he is one of them. Translation here is not accurate. It says, وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّهُمْ مِنْكُمْ فَإِنَّهُ مِنْهُمْ Look how the first, first translation, they took the word that says he is one of them in the translation. Let us change the translator and you will see how the translation changed. This is Yusuf Ali. Let us go to other idiot. Big tell. Look, 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 look. Now we have, he is one of them. So Islam is not only forbidden Muslims to take us as brothers. He can't even be our friend. And if he take you as a friend and he mean it, he is not a Muslim no more. He is one of them. Are we listening? He is one of them, which means if you really consider us brothers and sisters, you are an ex-Muslim immediately. But in the comment section, this Abdul, he tried to present to you a different image of Islam, the nice sheep, the loving religion. Oh, our beloved Christian brothers, don't get emotional. I mean, look who is talking about emotional. If we make a cartoon about your prophet, you chop the head of people. And he is talking about how to control your emotion. And then you are more intellectual and logical than us. Look at the deception now. They are trying to get into your, you know, your back, like, let's see. You are academically sound than us. Please read your entire Bible. Who? In one hand, he is saying to you, you are more academically more than us. Then he's asking you to read the Bible. You are saying to you, and if you continue reading, you are stupid. You do not know what your Bible is saying. And then he says, don't get confused how he is, how we are more academically from you. And we are the one is confused, you idiot. Don't get confused with partial representation of the Holy Bible. Being a Muslim and hear the drama. So if we are more educated and we have more academy standard, how you as a Muslim who the Quran describe you as illiterate and your prophet is illiterate, you are going to explain to us the Bible. Hmm? Have you ever heard of a stupid logic like this? So this person tried to put himself down in order to make you feel comfortable. You are smart. You are intelligent. You are our beloved brother. We love you. We are Muslims. And then he start putting nails. Read the Holy Quran. In total, since the age of eight, being a Muslim, he read the Quran since that age of eight. I never heard of somebody can read the Quran in the age of eight. You can recite the Quran. You cannot read the Quran. What, what, what does that mean you read the Quran? You are in the age of 80 and you still you cannot explain a verse in the Quran. Okay, what happened to you after you reading the Quran at the age of eight? Now I am 52 years old. The greatest miracle is revealed in the Holy Quran by a person. Yeah, let us see one of the miracles. I want to show you a miracle from God. You know? 
and nobody can come with this, I assure you. Even all the great philosopher in the Greek, you know, history, they cannot even come with such a thing. This is your God. He went to his office and he decided to give us his wisdom. There's no blame in there upon the blind, nor any blame upon the lame, nor any blame upon the sick, nor on yourself if you eat at your home from your houses. Miracle. I mean, think about it, how God, you know, if this is not God, how he says such a thing. Finally, we discover, I mean, what's the point of this stupidity? Everybody eating his own. And you are telling the blind, it's not a problem if you eat in your home? So what is the blind at the time of Muhammad used to go to McDonald? People at the time of Muhammad, they used to order food from Walmart online? And now you are telling them the miracle wisdom. There is no blame on you if you eat in your houses, if you are blind, if you have a lame, and any one of you. So what, what you are what you are counting the blind and the lame and the sick, and then you say all of you. So what the point? Nothing. And then or in the house of your father, what the heck? Or the house of your mother, what the heck? Just say the house of your family, man. Do you need to count all those? And your brother and your sister and your cousin and your uncle and blah 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 blah. Just say your family. This is God. Imagine you have a president. He is making a speech to the nation. And now he is telling you, you have, there's no issue if you eat in your house. And you say, hey, Takbir, this is amazing president. Donald Trump, how you come with this? Oh, oh, this is the one who said that is Joe Biden because he is the one who caught Muhammad, not Trump. And or if you eat in the house of your father, he amazing, beautiful Joe Biden, he can do things nobody can do. It's so beautiful. Forget about the inflation. Forget about the oil price. Forget about everything happening in the world. He is the best. He just discovered I can eat in the house of my father and the house of my mother. How you can do that? A Muhammadan talking about miracle in the Quran. Is that where the sun set in a dummy, murky, bloody water? Or where they found where the sun set? Or the sitting place of the sun? Or the hail coming from mountains in heaven? Or the sperm is coming from, or the sperm become a blood, dead blood? The Quran is full of miracle. Are you kidding me? But I want to show you the biggest miracle ever. Any believing woman, she offer herself to the Prophet to if her. That is a miracle. To make a statement, all of it is about sexual privilege of Muhammad. All those women in the Quran, chapter 33, verse number 50, is about Muhammad if in women, who he can if. This is a miracle. There is no other book in the world. Mention how many women you can if Muhammad. This is only for you. This is not for every Muslim. This is not for every Muslim. This is only a privilege to Muhammad. No limit, no limit of how many wives he can have. No limit of how many women. No limit of anything in the top of that. Any believing woman, she can offer herself to the Prophet so he can if her. The Muslim, they say marriage. In Arabic, it says, yes, thank you, huha. Yes, thank you, huha is not marriage. To if her. Yesterday we show you the reference how Shaitan, he do nikah, he have a vagina in the left thigh and he have a penis in the, in the right thigh and he do nikah by this to that. So if nikah mean marriage, he don't say nikah the word. So any woman she offer herself to the Prophet so he can do nikah to her, which means to if her, a privilege for thee only. That is a miracle. See, Muhammad do not want anything from this earth. He is very humble. He want to F every Muslim woman. Prove me wrong. And because all Muslim women, they are never hasty to jump in the lap of Muhammad, then he will F them all. Any believing woman, even if she is married. If you open the tafsir about Zaid and Zainab, the story, you will find that Ibn al-Arabi, he mentioned 16 privilege. And one of them, 
if the prophet eyes fall into a woman her husband must divorce her we have somebody trying to call me let us call him yes my friend you are live on air are you a muslim oh, we have a donkey here okay <laughs> All right, next. Let us see this one. You sound good, by the way, when you are doing that sound. You sound like your prophet when they broke his teeth. Hmm. We are calling the second Muslim. We hope he's not the same quality. He's not answering. So as you see, it's a privilege only to the prophet. What is the privilege? Women, he if. And that is saying to you how the miracles of Islam work. Hello? It, it must be uh, Fakira, son of Muta. Just to show you how stupid you are, Fakira. You call yourself Jarrar. Guys, just to show you, this donkey Fakira, what she is doing. Kasim Jarrar. Do you know what Jarrar mean? Pimp. Pimp. So you want to call me as a Muslim and you call yourself Qasim the Pimp. Nice to meet you, Fakira. You are. A pimp, obviously. The one who called his prophet the F word, he must be a pimp. I never say the F word to Muhammad. You know? I would never say that too, but you did. Pimp, Jarrar, huh? <laughs> Perfect name. Go right now to the dictionary, you donkey, and search for the word Jarrar, and you will see what it means. You are a stupid idiot. You are Jarrar. From now on, I will call you Jarrar Fakira. All right. So it's a privilege for Muhammad to F every Muslim woman, including this Jarrar, who she called me. It's a privilege. And the Muslim, they have no shame to say. This is their books. This is their, like, the highest education of Islam books. If the Prophet... His eyes fall into a woman. Her husband must divorce her. Now let me show you the evidence. This is Tafsir al Qurtubi. Volume number 14, page number 212. Is that my book? No. Is that my interpretation for the Quran? No. Is it me who wrote it? No. Is that a Muslim website or Christian website? It's a Muslim website. It must be a, a nightmare. Hello? Uh, yes, nightmare. You want to talk about your prophet? If his eyes fall into a woman, her husband must divorce her? Huh? Why are you calling me? Why? You say that uh, yes, thank you. Why is to, to F her? Yeah, is that wrong? No, it's thank you. How you to get married to her? Okay, I want to show you something then. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay, I'll show you dictionary, no problem. But I will show you. All right. Okay, okay, okay. Dictionary, you know. Yeah, here we go. This is your dictionary. It says here. And I will show you in the screen. Can you see my screen? No, I'm not in YouTube. No, look in the screen. You need to look at the screen because I'm showing you evidence. Do you see my screen now? No, 
No, it doesn't show up. What do you mean it doesn't show up? You say inshallah, say inshallah. Uh -huh. hmm? It's not showing up because you're not saying inshallah. You have to say inshallah. Huh? I'm waiting for you. Do you see it or not? Hello? No, it doesn't show up. Maybe I'm late. Yeah, maybe you're late. You're always late, like your prophet. Let, prophet me, let, me read, let me read for you until you see it. Okay, it says here, قَالَ مُجَاهِدْ إِنَّ كَيْفِيَةَ وُجُودَ النَّسَبْ مِنْهُ This is talking about shaitan, how he have children. أنه أدخل فرجه في فرج نفسه فباض خمس بيضات شتى قال فهذا أصل ذريته وقال بعض أهل العلم علم أن إن الله تعالى خلق له في فخذه اليمنى ذكرا وفي اليسرى فرجا فهو ينكح هذا بهذا what the word ينكح mean translate now show me the dictionary. I will show you the dictionary. What the word yanka? You know, we know that in the dictionary now you are adding it because the Quran mentioned it, and you claim it is word mean marriage. But we know that this is not marriage. No. This dictionary, no. This, no. this dictionary is made yes. to fit with the Islamic teaching no. lying about the meaning of the word. Is, is that your book, or I'm making things up? Does it say? That shaitan, he have a penis in the right thigh, and he have a vagina in the left thigh, and he do nikah by this to that? Is shaitan getting married by using his penis, putting it inside? Is that marriage? Did you, did you finish? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, all scholars, all scholars of Quran, hmm. they say the word nikah, when it, when, uh, when it show up in the Quran, it means getting married. That's what the scholars are saying. Okay, is your prophet Muhammad a scholar? What do you mean, Prophet? Who is higher? Who is higher? The Prophet. scholars? Who is higher? The scholars or Muhammad? In Arabic, Prophet Muhammad is better. Do, are you saying properly? Did you say just? Did I just heard you right? Properly. In the Quran, did you understand what I say? All scholars. I'm asking you a simple question: Is Muhammad higher in Arabic from the your scholars, or he is lower? Hmm? Huh? Is your Muhammad? Higher than the scholars in Arabic, or he is lower. Of course, Muhammad no Arabic better than. Uh, Thank than you very much. Not. So read with me now what I'm going to show you in the screen. Okay. Read, read. I can I, If I go to the, I will lose you. Just read no, it. you no, you can read it. You can read it. You can read. It. Stop, stop playing that. I cannot read. You know, you can read it, and you can see it. So this is the hadith I will show you in the screen. Here we go in a second. You don't understand what I'm talking Shut up about. and read for me what your prophet read read with me read for me and tell me what your prophet said. It says here. Uh, shut up. Shut up. Oh, listen. Listen. This your prophet getting you busted, and you are a liar like the rest of you. They ask Muhammad if they can have sex. Oh, shut up. If they can have sex intercourse with women when they have their period with their wives, your prophet he says. Translate for us. Go ahead. I, I can't see. I can I have to go to YouTube. To Stop giving me excuses. Here we go. I will give you the link in Skype. Here we go. Hmm. You have no excuse now. Open the link in your side. Click at the link. Okay. Okay. Did you finish talking? Did you finish talking? Yeah, I want you to open it and read it. Go ahead. Did you finish talking? I want you to open it and then you can start reading. What did you give me? It's a, it's a Quran or Hadith? I mean, do you see the, the low IQ? I told him which one he knew better, your prophet or the scholars. So if I say your prophet, are you saying that the Quran is made by your prophet? When I say to you, who is the one who knows better? Does it mean I am saying that the Quran made by Muhammad? Obviously, you think the Quran is made by Muhammad. Thank you very much. Actually, the Quran come from that, but this is a different topic. Open the Hadith and read. It says, 
that the prophet he said when your wife she have her period do with her everything except nikah so you said to me nikah me marriage but already she is your wife okay just did you finish talking go ahead mm. okay mm. i asked you all scholars i said when the word nikah appears and i ask you and i ask you this is about a human being this is about a human being and i ask you who knows better who knows better the mean of the word you're a prophet i said to you who knows the word meaning better your prophet or the scholars you confirm that you're a prophet. So why your prophet using the word nikah when he she is your wife already? They are asking him, can we f our wives when they have their period? He said to them, it's not kulla shay illa nikah. Translate. Go ahead. I challenge you. Why I'm, I'm talking in the Quran? What do you? you ah, you so, so in the Quran, guys, in the Quran, the word nikah means to marry. In the Hadith, the word nikah means to f. Huh? That means to have sex in the Quran. What? No. Okay, hold on. How in the Quran it means to marry, and here it means to have sex? Yes, it depends on the context. Okay, exactly. A woman, she no. offer herself to the Prophet. She offer herself. Offer herself to do. She offer herself to do what? Get, yes, thank you. Her. Let me ask you: Is the word yes, thank you, her, is a past tense or continuous tense? To, uh, no, there's, uh, stuff, uh, I'm asking you, uh, focus, focus, Abdul. Huh? Take your bill. Is, not, is the past. word yes, thank you, Huha, continue tense or a past tense or a present tense? It's mudare. Mudare. Okay, translate what mudare I mean. To, to ask her to, to get married to him or to get married to her. That's what it means. No, it That's says, how, how, how you. How you get married to her? Okay, you got either either it's you did it right now. It says yes, thank you. It's continuous tense. It's ing. No, no, no. That's not a continuous. No, the modare. Okay, the modare hold on, hold on. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, no problem. Listen, 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 listen. So, so now let us confirm. Let us confirm. Let us confirm from you. From you. Are you saying that when your prophet he say do nikah in the hadith he mean f to f a woman. When he say the word nikah in the Quran, it means to marry. Do you agree with that? In the Quran, the word nikah means to get married. Yes. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to show you something and everybody will laugh at you. Mm. The Quran said, you say to me that the word nikah means married in the Quran. In the Quran, there's a verse speak mm. that if a woman, her husband, divorced three times, she cannot get back to her husband unless, according to my understanding, unless she F a new husband, not to marry. No, no until she gets married. Okay, read for me chapter 2, verse number 230. Well, read it. Why, why, you, why you don't want you to read it? You read it. I don't know how to read. I'm illiterate, like your prophet. And I know, I know the, but I know the verse, but I don't know. Okay, tell me. So, does it say to marry or to F? Not to, to marry. Okay. Okay. Let us, guys, let us show you how they lie in the translation. In Arabic, it says that a woman, she is divorced three times. She cannot go back to her husband unless he ever. How we can prove it? Let us go to the hadith. A woman, her husband, did beat her until her skin became a greener than her clothing. Muhammad, the wife, the woman, she came to Muhammad asking for justice. The man, Muhammad, he took the side with the man, allowing him to beat the wife. But this is not our topic now. Look what Muhammad said. Muhammad talking to a woman, she is already married. She's already married and married to a man. Uh, his name is Abdul Rahman. And she was divorced from a man. His name is Rifa. So the woman here, she got busted by Muhammad. She is not willing to sleep with the new husband. You said to me, everybody heard you. That unless she marry a new husband, not to F a new husband. Listen carefully, you are the one who said that. You're a prophet here, he's saying. You should know if this is your intention. Your prophet is talking, show respect, stand up. He said to her, if this is your intention, then you should know it's unlawful for you to remarry Rifa unless you had sexual intercourse with you. So she is already now married. She is the wife of Abdul Rahman. Muhammad saying to her, you did not do the nikah yet. 
you did not have the sexual intercourse. So what this verse mean? The verse mean, you know, in Arabic even it says, Tankahu zawjan. He is my husband. She have to do nikah to the husband. And this is how we expose the lies of the Muhammadan. Are you there? Did you die? Yeah, I mean, the, what you are trying to say, a woman cannot cannot get married until she, she commit adultery with another man. That's what you say. No, you stupid. She have to F the new husband. If, if I understand the word until you mean she has to have a, a, a sex with anybody that she then she don't be stupid no it says until she if the new husband this is what the verse saying the translation is a lie it says until she marry a new husband uh, marry a new husband you stupid Muslims marry he is a husband already how she will marry a new husband he is a husband so until she if a new husband and this is what the hadith is saying the uh, Muhammad he said to her if this is your intention, you think you can get back to your previous husband. What? No, you're, you're getting it wrong. Look, look, listen, 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 listen. Look, look, look at the translation. It says, until she had married another husband. <laughs> you cannot say that. You cannot say, you cannot say until you marry a new husband. Until you get married. But in Arabic it says, until, until she do nikah to the new husband and the hadith confirmed that we showed to everybody the prophet said to her if this is your intention to go back to your previous husband you understand obviously she understand the verse wrong she think if she can marry the man and that's it he divorced her she go back to the husband no she did not do nikah yet so muhammad said to her if this is your intention listen abdul if this is your intention you should know you cannot get back until what is the condition? The condition is until you if the new husband, not to marry him, he's married already to her. Let me speak. Let me speak. Hmm. What the woman, what Muhammad is trying to say, you have to get married, you know, and the marriage has to be consumed. Thank you very so much. So this is what the verse is saying. So the word nikah, you see? Okay, you, you just get yourself busted. Okay, listen, listen, listen carefully. So the, the Quran says that there is zawj that is married. Zawj is to marry a man, right? Nikah does not mean marriage. Nikah to F the man. So you just confirm what I said. You cannot change Arabic language, man. That's what you're trying to say. This you is what you said. This is what you just said. You just said you have to do the effing thing. So marriage is not the reason for you to be able to get back. You said that. Everybody heard you. Right? So now, now we understand the verse better. So she cannot get back to the previous husband unless she do nikah to the husband, to the new husband. So the new husband is married now to her. But if she don't do nikah, she cannot get yeah. back, and you are the one who confirmed that. He said, okay, you have to know that this is we consider marriage only if he consumed the marriage. This is what they were saying. You cannot get back. Here we go. The hadith saying the story. A woman, she married a new husband. Now she is married. Still, she cannot go back to the husband, previous husband, because he had to F her. And where is the word F in, in the verse? Tankah. Okay, did you finish talking? You agreed with me already. Did you finish talking? <laughs> you agreed with me already. No, did you finish talking? Let me see. You know, I'm talking in my heart now. Go ahead. <laughs> it says until until she she get married. And you say until no. she No, you coward. You know you coward. No, you coward. It doesn't say that. Because the word zaujan, until she have if, if this is marriage, we have the word zaujan. Okay, what zaujan mean? What zaujan mean? What you, what zaujan what zaujan mean? What zaujan mean? You let me speak. Let Potato, me speak. no, what zaujan mean? Okay, who is the one who marry in Islam? The man or the women? Okay, who is... No, the woman also get married. No, no, no. Okay. No. Who, you know, who does the fucking... A woman who... Does Thank you very much. Okay. Well, she doesn't say until she get fucked. She's until she if a new husband. Until she, until she fuck. We don't she, have that. Tomorrow. Until she if a new husband. And you agreed. You, you, everybody heard you saying that she is not lawful to come back unless she consumed the marriage. How? By being effed. No, no. What, what did you say? Because if you know, you, you understood that woman can fuck. We don't, in Arabic, we don't, we don't say woman fuck a man. We don't say that in Arabic. You don't say that. You don't? So what do you say? Does not exist in Arabic. What, what, do, what do you say? What do you say? 
No, you know that. You know that. No, no, no. I'm asking you, what do you say? Teach me. No, we don't We don't say it in Arabic. It, okay, it, tell me, what do you say? Huh? You say huh? man, woman. You don't say woman, fuck men. Ah, okay. Me, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, okay, 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 okay. Okay, so you are saying to me, okay, okay, you are saying to me now that the verse using the word F doesn't cannot be F because usually Muslim men is the one who F the women, not the women F the man. Is that correct? That's what they have in Arabic. I'm okay, okay. Let's go back to the hadith and everybody will laugh at you. So are you saying your prophet is a certified donkey when he said you should know that you cannot go back to your previous husband until you F this husband. This is in front of you. You said to me, everybody heard you, that uh -huh. it is the man, shut up, shut up. You said, everybody heard you, that in Arabic we don't say that the woman if is effing the man, we say the man is effing the woman. So why your prophet says to her, let me read text for you. If this is your intention, then you should know that it is unlawful for you to remarry your father, the previous husband, unless Abdul Rahman had a sexual intercourse with you. Do you see it? What, uh, in Arabic, what do they say in Arabic? Mm, let us see, here we go. This is in Arabic. Why you don't uh, look at the screen? No, if I go to the screen, my, I'm, I'm in delay. Delay. I don't care. I mean, it takes forever because uh, simply it's not it's not a movie, my friend. I'm not showing you a movie. I'm showing you a text. Because because the word until he has sexual relationship, well, it, it, it's not going to be the word. That it can, but maybe another word. Ah, uh, okay. Actually, it's even more, more ugly. It says until you taste his semen. And he tastes your semen. It says until he tastes your semen and you taste his semen. You see, until he tastes. You see? And and she tastes. What is the word? And she tastes. And she tastes. Huh? And she. Yeah, the same. It's what. Has to do with sexual pleasure. Both of okay, them. hold on. So now you confirm that she have to finish this business before she can get back. So when you say the word, you can't so I will I will take this. I will take this to that to you. Okay, hold on. So now we have to replace the word uh, tenka to the word taste his semen. She have to taste his semen. Correct. You, you get busted. There is no word nikah there. Okay, hold on, guys. There is no word nikah. So why you Muslims are translated as sexual intercourse? Huh? I, you know, I was I was right. You were wrong. How? Huh? Yes. Huh? I told you. I told you. You you don't find the woman in a, a f uh, man in Arabic. We don't say that. You say man f woman. If if you're going to understand it in in in, uh, in a dirty way. You know? Ah, you Muslim, you don't say it in dirty way. Ah, uh -huh. you are very dirty. I mean, you are a Moroccan boy. I mean, in Morocco, the F word is the God word in the street. Are you together? You are a Moroccan, aren't you? What do you mean? I don't say it. What is the most popular word in Morocco? I can show you any video in YouTube of Moroccan people. Every two seconds, they say the F word. What it has to do with what we are talking about? The first thing you say to a person to insult him, your mother vagina, correct? What does that mean? To F her vagina, correct? And then suddenly you don't use the F word and we don't do F word and we don't say women F, you know. No, Muslim no, women, no. Muslim women, they say to Muslim men F you. She want to F the man. No, don't play it down. Okay, hold on. So now, what what the Quran meant by that verse? By saying, Tankahu zawjan, it means, according to your understanding now, she have to taste his semen. Do I agree? No, until she get married. Once she get married. Okay, hold on. No, if the woman, this woman, she is already married. You idiot. And the story, the story is in the front of you. The woman, she is already married. What is the problem? She did not taste his semen. She did not, and this is your Muslim translation, until she have sexual intercourse. So she is married. No, that's not that's not what the verse saying. This is what the hadith saying. This is this is this is that the practice practice judgment of Muhammad for the verse. The woman she cannot get back to her husband unless the new husband f her. It's in the front of you. Not marry her. So the word tenka, the word tenka have nothing to do with marry. 
It means, it means and only means until he if her and she if him. No, that, that's, that, that's Okay, why that. she cannot go back to the husband then? Why now? She's, she's married. Okay, I will go with you. So if the verse doesn't mean that the man he have to if the women, not only marry the women by making a contract of marriage, what is the condition? The condition until he if her before that, she cannot get back. Do I agree? Man, I'm not gonna repeat myself again. No, you repeat. You're you are always you are always repeat. Oh, the whole Quran is a repeat. Now you don't repeat. How come? So you actually okay, don't repeat. You agreed, you you agreed and you said because he have to consume the marriage. Wonderful. So the word marriage in the verse is where is Zaujan in the verse. Until she do nikah to a new husband, the husband is a husband. What is the act she have to do? Tankah. Do you see it? The act, the action. The zawj is already a man, he is a husband. It says zawj. Until she do nikah to the husband. It's in the front of you. The word zawj mean a husband. Then what the word nikah mean? To F. So this woman, she married the man, so now she have a husband. But she did not do nikah. That's why Muhammad saying to her, you should know that you cannot go back to your previous husband until the new husband do nikah to you. Okay, did you finish? Hmm. Are you going to no? repeat yourself again? Okay, go ahead. And you know what? And you know what? Just to show everybody how stupid this religion is. What kind of a wisdom, what kind of a filthy religion? You divorce your wife three times, and now she have to go and if a new man so she can come back to you. What is the wisdom of that? Are you asking me? Oh no, I'm asking uh, your grandfather. Okay, but but when I when I when I when I talk, you have to to stop until I finish. Okay. Go, Abdul. Go. Okay. What is the wisdom? Yeah. The wisdom of that. Uh, because she got married with you, you divorced her one time, mm. two times, mm. three times. Now, the woman, because because they give you three opportunities, you screw it. Now, woman has to get married with another man. And, oh. with another, and it's not because she to get married with you. No. No. She has to go yeah. with her and stay with that man. Then you, ha you can't. You can get married. Ah, ah, ah. But as you see, the Muslim women, you, hold on. Uh, as you as you see, first of all, your wisdom is so stupid because uh, if you don't want the man to divorce the women easy, why you make it so easy? I repeat your question. If you don't want divorce to be that easy so the man abuse the women, why you are making it so easy to the point you can divorce a woman, Muslim women today in text message? Text message, just text message. We are going home, you are in the stoplight, you send your message to your wife saying you are divorced. Legally, this is divorce. This is Islamic teaching, correct? So if you don't want a man to abuse marriage and divorce, why you are allowing him to make it so easy? So now you are the one who destroyed the life of this woman. You keep a plane on her in her life, marrying, divorcing, marrying, divorcing, marrying, divorcing. And now the poor women... In order to go back to her children, mostly she don't want to go back to you. You are an idiot. You divorced her already three times. You obviously are a donkey. And now she have to go. And this is what happened to this woman. Look, this is a Muslim woman. This is not a Christian woman. She want to go back to Rifa. But Rifa, obviously, as you said, he is a bad man. He divorced her three times already. Three times. And now she want to go back to him. Why? She have kids from him. Muhammad said to her, you should know that you cannot go back to Rifa who is obviously an idiot, unless you F the new husband. So now the wisdom is that the Muslim women, the Muslim women, she become a sex toy in order to get back to her children, who they are in the control of the previous husband. She have to F a new man. And now she is trying to get back. And this is what the woman she's doing. It's in front of you. Okay. Okay. You say why you make it easy to get there? Hmm. To to divorce in Islam, you say it's, it's so easy. It's not easy, okay? Really? It's, because this is why well, it's better than don't divorce at all. Imagine woman. But, you, but no, but you see, this is not about better than divorce. This is about this is this is about this is about you don't have marriage. You have a sex contract. 
Let, let me speak. Can the woman send a text message to her husband, divorce him? No, but you're, you're sick, man. You're Sh sick. Shut up and answer me, just to show you that you are a liar. If this is about making it, if this is better than divorce, can the woman, can the woman divorce her idiot husband, Rifa, by sending him a text message? Or only Rifa can send text message? Listen, let me speak. Hmm. You know why you don't allow me to speak? Because, you know, I, I destroy you. That's oh, always, you know, always, yeah. You are the one who do not know if your God is a spirit or not. You learned that from me. Jesus said, you can't divorce your woman your wife at all well that's crazy that's false I, that's false you're a liar you are, you are a liar like your prophet jesus I, he said it clearly you can divorce your wife if she is a cheater if she is a fornicator like your prophet but, but, but she's, she's not cheater she, you don't she's, divorce her because you don't abuse women you don't marry them and throw them in the street no, how about if she's married to a crazy, a psychopathic person? But then you, this is, if you break the command of God, listen, listen, you are stupid, again. If you are married, if you are married, stop, stupid, stupid, listen, listen, the cheating in the Bible, the cheating in the Bible is not only a woman sleeping with different husbands. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Listen, let me explain to you, let me explain to you. So, in the Bible, the cheating, the cheating is a cheating with God, not with the women. So, if a man, he made a promise in front of God to take care of his wife, and he broke his command, that is a cheating. That is a fornication. The Bible says the, uh, the earth committed adultery, but the earth have sex? No. And we never heard of an earth have a penis or a vagina. The earth committed adultery. So the earth is the one who is committing adultery that is going to be punished. And that is adultery in, in the Bible. Adultery in the Bible doesn't mean only sex. It means any, any, any big sin against God. So a man, he have to take care of his wife. He have to love her, he have to be honest with her, and he have to treat her kindly. If you break the command of God, shut up. If you broke the command of God, that that promise is broken to God, not only to her. And that will make her shut up. And now, the man in Islam, he can do the opposite. He can beat his wife. He can disrespect his wife. He can treat her like shit. He can throw her in the garbage. He can divorce her anytime he wish. And he can send her to somebody else to F her for him. And I can show you right now. Hold on. Did you watch Did you watch the movie? It's called Al-Muhallil. Listen. Did you watch the movie of, of Adil Imam Al-Muhallil? Yes or no? No, no, you just you just you just create things out of your mind. Me no. on Christianity, a woman. Hold has on, to no, this is that's not true. Hold on, hold on. Did you watch? Did you watch the movie, which is a, presenting a very well known situation in Islamic world? It's called Al Muhallil. No. Yes or no? no? We don't have that. No, we don't have that. We have, uh, you, you don't. You don't have that. No. Okay, I will put the movie in the screen, and I want you to swear by Allah. You did not see this movie. It's called Zawaj and Talab. This is Adil Imam, a very famous artist. He's a Muslim. His daughter, she is married even to a Muslim Brotherhood terrorist. And he made the movie about how he become rich and living a life of fantasy by ifing Muslim divorced women so they can go back to their previous husband. He was a poor employee. In a company, his the first customer was his boss. Shut up! Shut up! Can, can you deny? Can you deny that this is what you Muslims have in your life every day? Reference of Islam. Yeah. So this guy is is this guy is making things up. Show me, show me, show me hadith when Muhammad says okay. Show me what scholar says. Okay, don't put me. Well, me the up. Muhammad he said, "Okay, I just showed you." He told the women, "You you can go back to your husband after you have him." <laughs> but, no, but they are married. That's no, marriage. no. He said, "Until you have sexual intercourse, sexual inter read it, Abdul. It's in the front of you. This is your Muslim translation. If this is your intention, you want to get back to your previous husband. You should know that you cannot do that unless unless so she can go back, but she have to f the guy first. Okay, well, Muhammad is he's, uh, he's he agree what is what the movie was saying. Yeah, he just he's, he just said did the movie. He just said this is the movie. If this guy, he just if if this guy, hold on, he just told the women. He just told the he just told the women the solution is very easy. If the man. Yeah. If, listen, no, no. okay, let me read again. Let me read again what your Muslim saying. If this is your intention to go back to your previous husband, Rafa, read it carefully. You know, he said, and went to go, the husband, he said, she want to go back to, uh, to, to Rafa, the previous husband. Allah Messenger said to her, if this is, if that is your intention, then 
know that it's unlawful for you to remarry Rafa unless Abdul Rahman he F you. So she wanna go back. Okay, Muhammad told her what the solution. If the guy. <laughs> No, 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 you're, you're, you're making, you deliver. <laughs> Take a hike. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> he just said, you cannot get back. If this is your intention, you want to go back to your previous Rafa, you have to F this guy. After you do that, you go back. He just, he didn't say, you have to marry him for 10 years. You have to marry him for three years. He said, if you want to go back to Rafa, you should know and lawful for you to remarry. So what, when she will be lawful to marry Rafa after she has the new husband? It's in the front of you. This is not my translation. This is not my hadith. This is not my book. If this is your intention, you should know that this is what you should do. You should F the guy. So what is now between her and going back to the previous husband? is to F the new husband. So this movie, the one I showed you on the screen, is a very clear movie. They open even in the Middle East, a muhallil office, it's like a real estate agent. You divorce your wife three times, you need a husband to F your wife, you rent and you hire one. Can you believe it? it's a business? You hire somebody to F your wife because you cannot take her back You cannot take her back unless that husband F her. And this is the story of the movie. Those rich men, Muslim men, they divorce their wife. They get angry from the wife. He said to her, you're divorced. And now it's three times already. He cannot get her back. So they call this guy. You see in the screen. They call him to sleep with his mother, his, his wife. In his house, in his bed. In this scene here, the husband, he came back and he saw his wife so tired because she'll have a long night with the guy. <laughs> this is another wife. <laughs> this is another. <laughs> this is Islam. <laughs> and this is the wisdom, brother. This is the wisdom. You divorce your wife three times, she have to go and if a new husband. And you have to hire him for you. And he say that this is not what we do. So, you know, imagine guys, if you make fun of Islamic teaching in Egypt, you will, they will kill you. But this is because this is what they do. All those actors in the movie are Muslims. The one who made the movie are Muslims. Speaking of what? About what we showed you. A woman, she is divorced three times. She cannot get back to the husband unless you find a new husband to F her. He go, he F her. In the morning, he divorce her. She wait for, wait for 40 days because now they have to be sure that she is not carrying a baby from the one who F her last night. And you marry her again. That is Islam. You try to deny it, people are laughing. They heard you. I'm not going to repeat myself and you repeat yourself. Do you see how stupid this religion is? Can even we call it religion? Can even we call it religion? This is religion. If this is religion, what is garbage? And now she might marry a new husband. He divorced her again three times. So to go back to the previous husband, she have to marry another husband. And he have to F her. So the Muslim woman become a sex toy. Where is the wisdom? This is wisdom? This is wisdom. Not wisdom. You have to be a pimp to agree to take the women who slept with the multiple guys before she came back to you. And you know, if the husband is the one who's abusing the marriage, punish the husband. Why are you punishing the women? You can make it easy. If you divorce her, you are not allowed to remarry again.
if you divorce her three times and you try to remarry, that's it. You cannot, you, let us say, you cannot remarry again for the coming seven years to punish him. You can, you can do that. I'm not God, but I can come with, with a solution. I'm not a prophet, but I can come with easy solution. If you want to punish the man who is abusing marriage, well, now he divorced her three times. He can go and marry another woman and he divorced her three times too. And he married another woman, he divorced her three times too. He can marry four times, four women at the same moment. And divorce them in the second day three times too. And he keep repeating this forever. You did not stop the man from doing it. Obviously, this man he don't care. And this is all if you Muslim, you don't care. Women is a sex toy. Because if you respect yourself, if you respect your women, if you respect the mother of your children, you will not throw her in the street like a sex toy. So another man he can have sex with her. You want to stop this abuse for marriage? You are the one who created the abuse. By making the man can marry four women. By making the man easy to divorce. And he just said something very insulting. He said, in Islam, we don't say the woman is effing the women, the man. The, the man is effing the women. Why? You know? Yeah, because the women is the object. In fact, the Quran said, the Quran described the women as, a, as the ground. And he said to them, dig in your ground as you wish. Harthun lakum. The Muslim they heard that the Jews they hate to have a sexual position with women from behind in the wrong location or from behind as a position. Muhammad he come with a solution he said read carefully your women are terth to you for you so dig in your terth as you will. So what is the women in Islam? is a teth. That's all. She is a hole in the floor. This is not my words. This is not my description. This is their stupid Quran. She is a teth. She is a hole in the ground. Dig in the ground as you will. As you wish. How you like to dig it. When you like to dig it. As you wish. The woman, she is just a terth. She is not a human. She is not a wife. She is just a sex toy. And look, when you, between two brackets here, and send good deeds. So now you are effing your wife by doing if the effing wife. You are sending good deed to Allah. <laughs> look what they add between. Yeah, you know, in Islam, we don't say the woman, she is effing the man. We say the man is effing the woman. Yeah, we don't say that. That's not nice. Yeah, because the woman is a sex toy. This is the whole story. And the man only if the women. Because she is the object, the subject of sex. He can rent a woman. He can throw a woman. He can have four of them. In the same day, second morning, after five minutes, if you want, you can divorce them. There's no limit. There's no limit for how many women a Muhammadan he can have. He can have only four at the same time, but there's no limit. So if a man is rich, he can keep marrying and this divorcing every day. Even every, this is why uh, the pimp, Andrew, uh, pimp, he likes Islam. Because in Islam, you can be a pimp and the Quran have a license for it. Force not your daughters to do, your girls to do prostitution if they choose not. And if you force them, Allah is all merciful. So if they agree, you're fine. Being a pimp in Islam is a blessing from Allah. Anyway, so we did not finish the, the comment in YouTube uh, because we got busy with some Abdul's calling. Maybe we'll fix it. But here you see how the Muhammad and they try to present Islam to us as a lovely things. They don't want to show you that the Quran ordered to kill every single Christian, every single Jew, unless they pay money or die. As in chapter 9, verse 29. But in the comment section, they said to you, my beloved brothers and sisters, we are your beloved brothers and sisters. Are you sure? And the Quran is full of miracles. 
Exactly. It's a miracle to make anyone believe in such a stupid book. Look at this miracle as an example. Who can come with such an amazing story? That is a miracle. Solomon, he have an army of chicken and a human and genie. And when we say birds, we mean every bird. If you read even the number of the army, Suleiman he have, according to the Muslim interpretation for this hadith, this, uh, this verse, you will die laughing how big the army is. And they are in ranks. The bird army have generals. The genie armies have generals. Did you watch uh, Harry Potter? You know, the Lord of the Ring? That's it. Allah taught Suleiman the language of the birds. That's a miracle. Yet Suleiman, he do not know the language of the birds. He understand the language of the ants. It's very miracle, miraculous that you go to school to learn German. You graduate learning how to speak to ants. So Allah, he taught Suleiman the language of the birds, as it is the verse saying, verse number 16. To a step after Suleiman, he meet with an ant. And the ant, she said to her friends, Hide otherwise, Suleiman will kill you, will destroy you. Suleiman, he liked what she said. He smiled because Suleiman, he can hear the ant, but the ant are mute and deaf. They communicate by vibration and chemical. But the Quran says he heard her speech. Hear what? Hear a speech. Read carefully. This is not my translation. He amused at her speech. This is the Quran. This is the miracle of a book. I mean, this is an amazing book. Are you kidding me? There's no book like this. And those stories, you can find them in the books of the Jews. And that's why we laugh when this guy, he mentioned the Talmud or the Muslim mentioned the Talmud. Muhammad is just a copy paste. He is a copy paste person. Even actually the Muslims in the time of Muhammad, They said that the prophet is nothing but an ear. He's what? He's an ear. What, what does that mean? He's an ear. Anything you say to him, he believe it. Or he like it, he put it in the Quran. Can you believe even that a book made by God, God is talking, he mentioned and he agreed that yes, Muhammad is nothing but an ear? And among them are those who insult the Prophet and say he is all ears. The Muslim here translation is saying, say, he listened to your, for your own good. He believed in Allah, but this is not what they are saying. He's an ear. He's a copy paste person. He hear a story. He wrote it in the Quran. He heard about Alexander the Great. He put him in the Quran. Suddenly he made him prophet. He heard about Gog and Magog. He put it in the Quran. He heard about the seven sleepers, he put it in the Quran. The talking ant, he put it in the Quran. The flying carpet, he put it in the Quran. Tell Muhammad any story, he will put it in the Quran. He is all ears, for he is fake, he is a fraud. He copies stories from everybody. He have no original story of his own. All the stories he have, he stole them from somebody else.
And Muhammad, in order to hide that he is just an ear, he adds some spice to the story. And those spies make the story more funny. If you watch the video of Yasser Qadi, he's speaking about Gog and Magog, you will see how Yasser Qadi, a grown adult man, he claimed that he is a sheikh. How he shaked the Islamic world with his opinion about the story of Gog and Magog, because not only does it make sense, it's stupid. It's beyond stupidity. A creatures who they are Turkish, they are Asian, they are behind a wall. And what kind of wall? The wall is made from copper and iron. And those creatures, they are going to dig in the wall. And one day they will open a hole and then they will invade the earth. Zulkarnain, may Allah bless him, Alexander the Great. When he met with those people who they are so stupid, but yet they gave him a priceless advice to build a wall between us and them. And those people who are not people, and they can have each one of them 1,000 baby to one human, which means if one human have a baby, Gog and Magog creatures, they have 1,000 before he die. 1,000. So if we are 7 billion now, there's 7 trillions Gog and Magog, all behind the wall. And then they told him, Zulkarnain, and this is after he found where the sun rise. We know where they are now. It's where the sun rise. He found the place where his sun rise. He found it rising on people who they are stupid. They can't even understand the word. They cannot even understand. Look, look, it says a people who could barely understand what is said. They are stupid. Suddenly they are wise, they are engineers. Suddenly they said to Al-Qurnayn, how they can do their name? Gog and Magog are spreading Chawas in the land. Chawas in the land. Can we pay you? I mean, you want to pay, you know, you pay the guy who just conquered them. He is the king who occupy everywhere. And now you want to pay him. So Zulkarnain became a building contractor. You know, you know Zulkarnain, you want to build for me? I can't pay you. Yeah? I mean, the guy he took just took your land. He will enslave you, all of you, and you want to pay him. True story, makes sense. You know, we will pay you to build between us and them a wall. He said, "Okay, my lord has empowered me with the better, uh, but assist me with the strings." Okay. Bring me a block of iron, yeah? building a wall from iron and copper. And now he built a dam between two mountains. And now, brothers and sisters, Alhamdulillah, Gog and Magog cannot come to us. True story. The guy in the comment, he says, Quran is full of miracles. We have satellite, took images, every, every inch in this earth. Every single inch. I mean, this story alone is enough to prove Muhammad to be a fraud. But the stupid Muhammad, he never thought that time will come and people will be able to see the whole earth and they will have a map of every single inch of it. And he said to himself, if that happened one day, I mean, I will be dead anyway. So they are true creatures. And when they are going to come out, when in the day of judgment, brother, the Quran says that they cannot say this is a weak hadith. Yasser Qadi, he tried to solve it. He says maybe they will exist and they are gone. But the Quran says they will stay until the day of judgment. This is the book of God, the book of full of miracles. How that can be a book of God? That is the most stupid book ever. And we are just mentioning little, little of it. But this is alone is enough to prove to us that this guy is an idiot. He is an ear. He takes stories. He heard the stories. This is a story written by many, you know, the, the story about Alexander the Great. 
who called the man with the two horn written by a, a, by an, an author from Syria the same as many stories at that time Syria was the let us say uh, uh, the the land of education the Aramaic language become the most important language in the world it's like English today So the story is written by the Aramaic people. It is spread all over to Europe. Even the word Europe is coming from the Aramaic language. The word Africa is an Aramaic word. So Muhammad the Potato, he started collecting his stories to make a book. But I'm so grateful that his stories are there and the God did not eat them. Like the goat ate the verses of a breastfeeding for adult, which is very fishy to believe in. Because how in the world the goat she's chosen certain verses to eat? A goat she would eat the whole book. And even if the goat ate the verses, she did not eat the memory of the Muslims. Did she? Don't the Muhammadan they claim that they have the Quran memorized by heart? Okay, the goat ate the Quran. And the goat ate certain verses. But she did not eat your memory. And this is why I believe strongly that the one who ate those verses is the Muhammadan themselves. They decided to eat it because it's a shameful verses. I would love to have those verses in the Quran so we can love even more. Where Allah ordering Muhammad to, to give an order to a woman to give her breast to a stranger so he can suckle her ten times. That's going to be from God. That is the truth of Islam. You know, the Muslim they try to present for you Islam is Islam is a solution for your life, will make your life better. Well, you be the wife, have a lot of kids because Muhammad will be proud of you even if they have no education, even if they throw them in the street, even if they have nothing. And this is why you see the boat is full of Morocco and, and you know, every, every Muslim in the, in the world, they are coming desperately to Europe because their land is the land of depression. Everybody have 20, 50, 60 kids, but he cannot feed them. What they do, they dump them in the boat, they send them to Europe. And then the stupid European, they pay for the education. Since European they became liberals, and as all liberals and all atheists, they don't have a mind, they don't have any conscious. They are unconscious people. France now is reducing the a uh, changing the age of retirement. Do you know why? Because they are getting poor. They are getting poor in UK. Poor, poor, poor. You know what they were poor? Soon those European countries will become the third world. They open their borders for all immigrants. Who's going to feed those people? The one who work, he pay tax, they give it to the immigrant. You pay for the education, you pay for their medicine, you pay for everything. You pay for their housing, for their food. And now they are out of money. This is how stupid European are. And you know what? I'm happy because God will punish those who deserve to be punished. You know, when the Bible speaks about the evil spirit, God will unleash the evil spirit upon you. They forsake God. They are all about transgender, homosexuality, all kind of crazy stuff. And soon they will be bankrupt. And the same for America if they continue this way. And I will never cry for a country who forsake God. You get what you deserve. You get what you deserve. You open the gate of hell on you when you wash your hands from God. This is why I say stay with your Lord.
for he is the only one who can be your protector. Those stupid liberals are mental, literally mental. They fight the, they fight the Bible in schools. What the result? Their children are drug addict, criminals, shooting every day. A transgender, he go to school and he shot six Christians, kids. Joe Biden apologized for the transgender who killed the Christians, not to the children who were being killed. God will punish a nation like this. And the punishment might be severe. But for us, the true believers, we will never hesitate to say the truth as it is. Wrong is wrong, and right is right. Who like it, like it, who don't like it, drink the ocean water. You cannot intimidate us by Joe Biden, the coward. You cannot intimidate us by the liberals, the Democrat, the cowards. Our Bible is higher than you. Our Bible is higher than your constitution. Our Lord is our master and we have no master beside him. It's not you who can teach us ethic. You are the last one who can teach us ethic. They went after Trump because he have a child out of marriage. Well, what about all of you, Democrat? How many of you don't have children from marriage? Liar is hypocrite. So what if the guy, he have a child of marriage? He commits sin, no problem. But you go after him in a country where all the Democrats almost, almost, they have a children out of marriage. Six men having sex with men, women having sex with women, everybody having sex with everybody, and now suddenly they have ethic. Just because he's Trump. Why you hide that you have a child? You cannot hide it. Maybe the guy is hiding because he's ashamed of it. He don't want his wife to know that he is a disgrace like you. We are not talking politics, Mr. Taxes. Don't be stupid. This is not politics. It's about God. For you, it's politics. For us, it's about God. Your nation will be destroyed because you have zero ethic. This is not politics. We don't do politics. If we do politics, then we will say what the public like to hear. That is politics. If we do politics, we will speak what you like to hear. Do you know why we don't have donation in YouTube? Because we don't do politics. We say what we believe. Only stupid people like you think we are doing politics. That is not politics. That is sharing the truth. Pervert. Teaching children to have sex with adult. Bringing a man wearing a skirt. He have a voice of Tarzan. And he's trying to convince her that he is a female. Teaching children they are six years old to change their gender. Some dummies who they claim to be Christian, they think if you stand against this, you are speaking politics. Well, that means Jesus was speaking politics. Elijah was speaking politics. Moses was speaking politics. All the prophets of God, that means they were doing politics. Idiots. The Christians should stand and go against those teachers, false teachers. And that's what we are doing now against Islam. They are trying to destroy your nation, your ch your family, your children. They are trying to make them have zero ethic. Don't let those filthy teach you ethic.
they are filthy already. Their filth cannot even be washed. Uh, we have Mr. Koopi saying, why all of you hate Islam without a reason? I like it when the Muslim, they come to you in a clothes of a sheep. Why you hate Islam? What is the reason? Uh, Koop, he never heard of how many people Muhammad killed from the Christians and the Jews. He never heard of the Quran saying, Allah will spread hatred and enmity between the Christian and the Jews in chapter 5, verse 14. He never heard. Why? Why you hate Islam without any reason? Why? He never heard of 50 people in Nigeria just yesterday they've been slaughtered by the Muslims. 50. Why? Why you hate Islam? Without any reason. He never heard that Islam teaching hate and aggression and killing and bloodshed or beating women or having sex with the children. Why? You see how they're playing a sheep? He's a sheep. He's a peaceful. What's wrong with you people? Al-Qaeda are not Muslims. ISIS is not Muslims. Muhammad himself is not a Muslim. Isn't it Muhammad who says, I've been victorious by terror? The first terrorist. Nusir to be robbed. I was victorious by terror. Oh, Islam is peace. Islam is a wonderful religion. Who is the one who said that about the Prophet? This can't be true. It's in front of you. I was victorious by terror. And this is authentic hadith. Terrorist prophet. Islam is a religion and the culture of terrorism. The man, he terrified the women, he beat her if she disobey. Ter terror. This is terror. What is terror for? Terror is to change you to obey and not to resist. So they scare the hell of you, intimidating you, so you become a potato. It's what terror, so Muhammad became victorious by terror. Even he said that people, they give up their sword from a distance of one month journey. How peaceful Muhammad was to the point people are scared of him from a distance of one month. That's very peaceful. Look, it says here, a we, I was victor, victorious by a we, by terror, between two brackets of a frightened my enemies from a distance of one month journey. Gog and Magog. Do you see how peaceful he is? Just a month journey, distance from Muhammad, and they are terrified, and they put down your weapon. They can't defend themselves. A month journey. And they come here, and they play sheep. In fact, the Mohammedan today, they are scared of the gospel from one billion year journey. That's why they fight Christianity everywhere. You can't preach the gospel in their countries because they are terrified, because they are coward, because they knew they cannot stop the truth unless they forbid the truth. If they have a religion and they are sure from it, they should allow the Christians to go to Saudi Arabia and preach the gospel to militia, to all countries. What is the problem? Isn't it Islam peace? Islam is a piece of shit. And this is the truth. When Muhammad is said, because he's peaceful, you know, they speak about genocide. Muslims, they speak about genocide in Bosnia. But they will not tell you how many they killed there. But isn't it your prophet is the first one who made genocide because of religion and ethic, ethnic? The Jews are ethnic and religion at the same time. Even Muhammad, he said, that's the duty for every Muslim to kill every single Jew. And not only that, even the stones and the trees, they will tell the Muslims, hey, there's a Jew behind me, come and kill him. And this Abdul saying to us, 
Why do you hate Islam? Without no reason. Without any reason. Those Christians are lying to you. I mean, this filthy Muhammad want to kill everybody. And he is questioning you, this Abdul, why you are so angry from Islam? What's wrong with you? Without any reason. Go and read the Pact of Omar. A Christian can't even ride a donkey facing the, the, the head of the donkey. He have to face his ass just to humiliate the Christians. Christian, they have to shave their head. Christian, if they want to wear a cross, it have to be more than nine kilograms of steel. A Christian have to open his house three days, three nights to any Muslim come to his house. Imagine a Muslim knock at your door. You have to let him stay in your house, in your bedroom. Three days, three nights, you don't even ask him why. And they say to you, Islam is a wonderful religion, full of miracles. And then the Mohammedan, he start his comments saying, brothers, our beloved Christian brothers and sisters. <laughs> you are fooling who? Abdul, you are fooling who? Not us. I want to say thank you guys for being here. I hope you learned something good today. I hope you took reference. Feel free to download the video. And especially when the Mohammedan, they call, Download their conversation, their argument, and let the whole world laugh. Their sheikh don't dare to debate us because they will lose their career. The small ones, they give us the answer they heard from their sheikh, which means we are debating their sheikhs without the sheikhs calling. They give us the answer of the sheikhs, and then their answers is hilarious and stupid. And their sheikh will never dare to call me because they knew what will happen if they does. Again, happy Easter for all of you. He's risen, he's alive, he's the Lord, he's the King of Kings, he's the Messiah, he's the Alpha, he's the Omega. I am the life, I am the way, I am the resurrection. There's no definition can def tell you who is Jesus more than this. You are seeking life, that is Jesus. You are seeking the way to have life. To be alive, to be with God, He is the way. You know you will die. You seek resurrection. He is the resurrection, for He is the resurrector. He is the one who over death by death. And no one can do that, save God. No tomb can hold Him, and no grave can keep Him. And no evil can destroy him. He said to them, you can destroy this temple and I will rebuild it in three days. And the Messiah always keep his promise. And he promised us that time will come and he will come back. And he is coming. And then he will order his holy angels and he will say to them, bring them in front of me. And slay them. Which means send them to hell. Because at that time, you will wish you would be slayed. You will wish death, but death will never be coming your wish to be true. Hell is your house. In hell you will be. In hell, Muhammad is going to be the leader of the hell people. So I say to the Muhammadan, only foolish ones, they will leave the living Messiah and they will follow the dead Muhammad. The Bible mentioned actually that death is hell. Death is hell. Where is Muhammad now? He is in hell. Where is the Messiah now? He is in the holy heaven. But the holy father, that is my Lord, who is yours. Thank you all. See you soon again. Christ is Lord, Islam is false, and God bless you.